New Buy Sell Keep Avoid is back for Game Week 7. Welcome to FPL mate, my name is Dan and after Game Week 6, we need these videos more than ever. Let's get stuck in and see what we should be doing with our transfers. Just to let you know, the latest episode of Stick to FPL is now live. If you haven't checked it out already, I really recommend you go and do so. This week, we focused a lot on Cole Palmer, looking at when to wildcard if you haven't done already, and maybe putting into perspective how good our ranks are looking at this stage of the season. I know you're going to love it. Search Stick to FPL on any of your favorite audio platforms, and it's also on YouTube in video form. Check it out. So as always, we are going to be tier listing players as whether you should be buying Buying, selling, keeping, or avoiding them, putting them in various categories. And we're going to start off with those players that you might already have. And these players are your keeps and your sells. We're going to start off with the forwards with a couple of players you see on screen that if you have them, you should probably keep them. So Havertz, Watkins, and Jackson are our, our keeps for game week seven. And all three of these players putting up really, really strong numbers. You can see all three over 3.5 XG so far during this season so that looks like they're going to average a goal at least every other game and the numbers suggest that they have done that three goals for Havertz so far this season and a great fixture against a Southampton team that just unfortunately does not look fit for the Premier League a home game as well for Arsenal we're expecting Arsenal to score a few goals in this game week just like they did last week against Leicester they did four last week can they do five this week and if they do Havertz very likely to be involved Last week, Havertz got around two expected goals. He was very involved in those attacking plays. And we think that's going to happen once again for game week seven. Uh, also a little bit of creativity there. He has got one assist. After that, Bournemouth away, Liverpool at home and Newcastle away. These are not such great fixtures, but you have to trust a team like Arsenal can beat anyone who is in front of them. Ollie Watkins is our next keep. If you have him, then of course you absolutely must keep him. If you're on a wild card right now, again, he's a another player you might want to include in that. Now, the next fixtures against Manchester United and Fulham, they aren't amazing, but watching Man United last game week, they're going to be missing Bruno Fernandes as well. Could this be a good opportunity for Aston Villa and an Ollie Watkins who has finally found his feet, finally found his form? Can he continue to get on the score sheet as he seems to be doing so often at the moment? And Nicholas Jackson is another really nice player to keep if you already have him, despite the fixtures starting to get a little bit more worrying. Now, in the monitor section, we have a lot of those cheaper forwards. Now, if you really want to sell them, fair enough. That's why they're in the monitor category. If you feel like you want to keep them, then you should. If you feel like you want to sell them, then you can do that as well. But they're not must keeps and they're not must sells either. Somewhere in the middle, which is why they're in the middle of this particular graphic. And really, it's a case of what do you expect from these guys? These guys are not going to be as good as your Havertz, Watkins and Jacksons of the world. They're going to be a little bit weaker. They're going to score fewer goals. And although some have scored a few goals recently, I don't think they're really worth making a transfer this week, particularly Vardy, as he does have some great fixtures. He's very almost a definite keep, but I also understand if you might want to sell him. Wood, again, difficult fixture this week, actually, but I think he is worth keeping. Same with Welbeck and Duran. Very close to being a sell, but but I don't think I would waste a transfer on him. He's still getting some minutes off the bench, but he's never going to be a massive scoring player until he can start getting some starts because he is going to struggle to get points for playing and he's going to struggle to get bonus points if he's not on the field for very long as well. So just be aware of that one. He is a player we might want to consider selling if you do have him, but I don't think too many of you guys have the rotation risk Aston Villa man. And in the sell category, we're going to put João Pedro in here first of all. We're still not sure if he is going to be available or not. Uh, he is possible that he returns this game week, but it's not guaranteed there. So uh, do be aware of that. The fixtures kind of average to be fair coming up and there's so many options at Brighton at the moment in the forward positions in the attacking positions that we expect a bit of rotation so it might be best to just get rid of him and pick someone who you know at least is guaranteed some minutes we'll come to some forwards buys very very shortly don't you worry Isaac is another player who I'm not keen on I think he would be a player to sell most of you guys probably sold him ahead of the City game but he is still very much in doubt as whether he is going to be available 
available for game week seven to play. So for that reason, his poor form, the fact that he's not fully fit, he's quite expensive. And there are just better options at the moment. I would be looking to sell him. And of course, Wissa being injured for several more weeks, he has got to be on the sell list as well. For our midfielders, I'm going to put Saka and Salah in here at the top, first of all. You've got to keep these players, surely, because I know there are other tempting players around at the moment, and we'll get to those tempting players when we come to the buy section. But let's be totally honest. Saka and Salah both have phenomenal fixtures in game week seven. Saka and Salah are both definite captain options for game week seven. These are players that if you sell, you are playing with fire, even if you replace them with a player you think is going to be a little bit better. I would try your best not to sell these players. There may be another player you prefer, but unless you're in a very privileged position where you have no other problems in your team, there's, it kind of doesn't seem worth it. Certainly not to take a minus four to sell these kind of guys. It, it, I definitely would not be doing that. Their numbers are great. They both had uh, great games recently. Salah is consistently scoring. Saka, really, really consistent player. Blanked last game week, but he was so creative. Had plenty of opportunities to score as well. These are players putting up elite numbers because they are elite players playing for elite teams. And going into this game week, you just know that both of these players Players have a great chance of getting on the score sheet. Luis Diaz is another player I would look to keep if I already had him. Whether or not I'd buy him is another question, which we will address, but uh, he's been doing very well so far. One small concern about these Liverpool attackers is they did look a little bit flatter in game week six against Wolves. Wasn't super impressed by them, but we know the quality. We know the ability that these players have. Just be aware with Luis Diaz that he is going to become rotation risk at a certain point. I don't know if that's going to happen now necessarily, but it will happen in, in, the, in the near future at some point. But if you have him, maybe worth keeping these players for game week seven. Saka, Salah, Luis Diaz for their good fixture in seven. Keep them and then let's move on to game week eight and we can have this discussion again I suppose. Diogo Jota is going to go in the monitor section. Um, and the reason why he's in a monitor section, even though he had a good game week six, by the way, uh, we did put him in keep last game week. So congratulations to everyone who did keep Diogo Jota for his nice score. Two assists in that game. Really, really positive stuff there. However, there is reports that he may be carrying a slight knock at the moment. So whether or not he's going to be available for game week seven comes under some slight question. But he is going to be a player to be moved on at some point in the near future. Again, with that rotation risk, particularly if this injury turns out to be worse than we think but keep an eye on that I will of course update you when we get to Friday's video where we do all of the injury updates Smith Rowe is a monitor don't think I would sell him because he's a very good value for money player but uh, this Man City game away is obviously very tough in an ideal world if you have Smith Rowe you would bench him for this game week rather than sell him because after that Villa at home Everton and Brentford are I like the look of those fixtures after game week seven. Madueke, not really done anything since that hat trick way back when. So he's another player I would be thinking about selling. He is somewhere in the middle here. And Eze, at this point, look, let's be honest, guys. His numbers are phenomenal, but Crystal Palace... You know, considering that they're not looking great anyway, you look at these next three fixtures, Liverpool, Forest, and Spurs. By the way, Forest and Spurs both putting up really good defensive numbers. Forest in particular, barely conceding any chances in that game against Fulham last week, for example. I, Fulham basically didn't have a chance that whole game other than the penalty. They had one half chance, then the penalty. Forrest are just a good defense and away is really, really tough. So these next three fixtures, they're not for me. And I think this is a, I think it was worth giving Ezra the Everton game just to try him out for one more game. But I think that's probably the final straw for him. I'm sure a lot of you guys agree. I'm sure a lot of you guys have been shouting at me about Eze for a few weeks anyway. So uh, yeah, congratulations if you went against my advice on the Eze one. We can't get everything right, but we try and get as much right as we can. But yeah. 
happy to concede on this one now and apologies guys but we've got to move on to the cells son slight injury issue i think he should be okay for game week seven but i'm not 100 percent on that one bruno fernandez obviously suspended and de bruyne uh, less likely to play in seven but he could be back for game week eight we're not sure uh, exactly how long he's going to be out for but i think the big thing with son fernandez and de bruyne is they're all quite expensive midfielders and even though we have players like Saka and Salah who are providing value for money at the moment they are being consistent you know they may not be the top scoring kind of premium player every week you know Palmer was the top scoring in game week six other game weeks maybe it's Harland Salah on on other game game week one was Salah you know so different weeks different premiums are going to be the guy with the most points however with Son, Fernandez, and De Bruyne, I just don't see them as having as much threat as some of these other guys. Son, for example, playing very, very wide. So it's going to be difficult for him to get a lot of goals in the same way as a Salah or a Palmer, for example. And Fernandez, obviously suspended. His numbers are okay, but Manchester United just in a bad situation right now. And De Bruyne, again, his numbers are decent, but Comparing them to the likes of a Saka or a Salah or a Palmer, you know, it's just not quite there. And if you're spending this much money on a player, they have to be really good. Really, really good. Um, you know, very good is not quite good enough when you want to spend that amount of money. So we'd be looking to remove all of these players for their minutes risk due to injuries or suspensions, but also their numbers. Also what they are providing on the pitch, their roles within their team. These are all reasons why I would sell them. And I think these are the kind of players I would sell for someone like Cole Palmer. Saka and Salah wouldn't do it. Son, Fernandez, De Bruyne, I would do it. For defenders, Trent is obviously going to be a keep for this game week against Crystal Palace. Really nice opportunity with Palace looking so poor at the moment. Uh, actually, Liverpool super unlucky to lose their clean sheet last week. And if they kept the clean sheet, we'd probably be having a different discussion about those Liverpool defenders. But uh, a Canate silly mistake really cost Liverpool that clean sheet. And hopefully that's not going to happen every week. After seven, we have Chelsea and Arsenal in eight and nine. And at that point, we would probably be be looking to sell some of our Liverpool uh, defenders in particular, but maybe even some attackers as well. Pedro Porro, I would definitely keep. Kept a clean sheet last week. We've put Pedro Porro in the keep section uh, for this episode and last episode as well. Obviously got a clean sheet against Manchester United. And I think genuinely, I've been surprised to see Spurs uh, defensive numbers not that bad. They've kept two clean sheets so far this season, which in six, doesn't sound amazing, but considering the standard of clean sheets in this FPL season, um, that's actually not so bad. Of course, we're really looking at the attacking threat that this guy has. Takes a load of shots, creative as well, and he is going to get you occasional attacking returns. The next three fixtures, maybe even the next four fixtures, look pretty good from an attacking point of view, and some of them from a defensive point of view as well. Saliba would be another one to keep. I know some people would prefer to have Gabriel. I would definitely prefer to have Gabriel. And if I'm on a wild card. There's no way I'm keeping Saliba. But if you're just talking about transfers, seems a bit of a waste of a transfer. Saliba, it should be good for a clean sheet against Southampton. But hey, we said that last game week. Ben White is one to monitor whilst we find out his injury status. Um, I'm recording this before the Champions League game. So I don't know if we will get any more information from that game around Ben White. But if he is available, he is pretty much nailed to play every game. Has a little bit of attacking threat as well. Well, but um, he, I think he is definitely going to be worth keeping for the Southampton game if he's available. But that's why he's in the monitor category. Robinson, another player. You probably keep him if you can bench him. But that's going to be down to you. Aston Villa defenders, I think because of the Manchester United situation right now, it's, it's, it's harder to suggest to sell Aston Villa defenders even though they have been disappointing but you maybe give him another chance and burn another player you maybe give a chance Newcastle have been poor this season but we have seen a slight improvement in that Manchester City game so against Everton and Brighton could burn 
maybe actually keep a clean sheet in, in this game. I think it's possible, but I'm not super confident, which is why he is not a straight up keep. And those Manchester United defenders, I think, have to be sold now. I, I can't really see where the clean sheets are coming in these next four fixtures. It, it doesn't look too good, to be honest, um, right now. And that there's not really enough attacking threat there to justify keeping them either. And Lewis Dunk, those, uh, those Brighton defenders, they've probably got to go as well. Spurs, Newcastle and Liverpool. Liverpool in the next four. It's not looking too good. And by the way, guys, if you are enjoying this video, make sure you do drop a like. It really does help out the channel so much. Do subscribe if you're new around here. And if you've got any suggestions on how we can continue to improve this series, do let me know in the comment section. Right, onto the buy section of the video. And we're going to be talking about those players that you might not have yet. And if you don't have these players, we got to think about maybe buying them. Or if you if you don't have them, you know, it could be that you shouldn't buy them. Maybe they're a voids as well. But the first players we're going to be talking about are the forwards that you should be thinking about buying right now. Haaland is always going to be in this buy section, I think. Maybe not always, but for now, he is certainly 10 goals so far this season. A rare blank against Newcastle United. But looking forward to Fulham, Wolves and Southampton at home in particular. That's another triple captain opportunity for him. It really, really is. So, yeah, expecting big things from Haaland uh, over the next few game weeks. But that is that is Haaland, right? A rare blank from him last week. I don't think people should overreact to that. And if you don't have him, I would be very careful about going without him again. But if you already have Haaland, Solanke once again is going to be in the buy section. He did score in the end last game week. His numbers per 90 per start are really good, really nice. And that's just because he is the Spurs striker. The Spurs system favours the striker every single time. And Solanke is going to get plenty of opportunities. Fix just look good for Spurs, particularly from an attacking point of view. So I think Solanke is a player I would love to have right now. Maybe if you have a another attacker you're not so keen on or you want to upgrade someone, Solanke would be the first player I would buy after Haaland, of course. And Kai Havertz, I know the fixtures don't look great in the medium term, but for this Southampton fixture, I think he can make up for it. If you don't have Havertz, I think he's definitely a player to consider, but I would prefer Solanke, I think. Nicholas Jackson, once again, just misses out on the, the buy section, just because I prefer Solanke and Havertz at a very similar price. And I think Jackson does have much weaker fixtures than some of these other players that we've spoken about. Forest in seven, Liverpool in eight, Newcastle Castle and Manchester United in 9 and 10. Now, granted, those last two fixtures, they sound okay. Newcastle have improved against City, though. So I'm wondering if they will continue to improve from there, which worries me a little bit about attacking that fixture. And Manchester United, again, they are another one of those sleeping giant teams. They are bad until they're good, right? It's not a case of Manchester United are never keeping a clean sheet, never going to improve ever again. They will. We don't know when it's going to be. And game week 10 is a long long way away we're talking uh, well over a month away so they have a lot of time to improve in that time of course in game week 11 Chelsea do also face Arsenal and those are the kind of reasons why I do prefer some of these other players to a Jackson um, I think they're all good but we have to try and find a way of splitting them. And I think the fixtures do exactly that. Watkins, another player to monitor. You could buy him if you wanted to. But because he's a little bit more expensive than these other guys. And I'm not sure he offers too much more than some of these other guys. I think he is one to monitor. But definitely an option for you. Again, these monitor players, if you feel strongly about them, then you should absolutely make, make the move. If you feel like they're a buy, buy them. If you feel like they're an avoid, avoid them. That's why they're in the middle. I'm not tell you, here to tell you guys what to do, but to show you some numbers and share my opinions. Uh, we've got Delap and Vardy finally here. I think in general, these cheaper forwards are just players to monitor. If you already have a cheap forward who is a regular starter you're probably good to just stick with them and hope I suppose but uh, you could maybe make a switch if you really wanted to if I was to make a switch to a cheaper forward right now it would probably be Delap or Vardy which brings us to the avoid section and we'll fill this up with these other cheaper guys this week I don't think I would buy Welbeck against Spurs I don't think I would buy Wood against Chelsea Chelsea by the way 
actually okay defensively so far this season. And Rao Jimenez doing really well for 5.5 million. Maybe the penalties have helped him a little bit, but that Man City away fixture, this is not a fixture you want to be bringing in a Rao Jimenez. Now, the one exception to these kind of guys is maybe if you are bringing them in as part of a double transfer. So say, for example, you are you have to downgrade one of your forwards in order to upgrade another area of your field. You just need to find a cheap forward. At that point, maybe some of these monitors and avoids can turn into monitors and buys, I suppose. So uh, yeah, you, you, there is still reason to go for these players, but in general, for most people on an individual transfer level, I would just stick with what you've got. Right, let's do the midfielders. And Burmo tops the list for me. I think if you are looking for a new midfielder and you haven't got on Burmo, you're looking for value for money, a player in form, a player on set pieces, penalties, and the star of his team, then look no further. This guy is the man in form, comes in at a very decent price tag, and he's got great fixtures for the next 10 game weeks. So you could just bring him into your team, set him, and forget him. Solves a problem, a position in your uh, FPL team for a long period of time. Really like this pick. Madison is going to come in here as a differential. The data is really backing him up as an option to go for. He is a set piece taker again for Spurs. Nailed on for minutes, which is really, really nice. And uh, yeah, he will pop up with the occasional goal. One small concern is he can play a little bit deeper when paired with Kulisevsky in the midfield. So if that is happening, um, just be aware of that with Madison. But the fixtures for uh, for our Spurs guys, really quite nice. So I definitely think he is worth having a look at. He is probably the data pick after Umbermo. And finally, Palmer. Like I said, if you have a Son, a Bruno, a De Bruyne in your squad, then Palmer is obviously going to be a really nice replacement. If you're on a wild card right now, you would probably buy Palmer. But if you have a Saka or a Salah, I think you can hold on to them for one more week. And that goes back to the fixtures. Forest is a pretty tough fixture right now. It really is. I know they're not seen as a good team, but... You know, we can take our minds back to Everton last season or Sheffield United a few years ago. They weren't necessarily great teams, but they were hard to score against. So an easy fixture, but not necessarily easy for getting goals. And what we have seen with Palmer, particularly when we get to some of these tougher fixtures, is Palmer is a player who typically will score well in the easier fixtures. And we've kind of seen that already. Um, very absent against Man City and against Bournemouth away, which are the two toughest fixtures. Um, in fairness, Brighton is not a it's not exactly an easy fixture, but they put in a really poor performance in that game. The other games where Palmer has done well, you know, Wolves, for example, these are fixtures which I would probably judge as easier fixtures, right? And those fixtures don't exist, certainly in the next two. Nine and ten, we can, ha we, can we can all argue as much as we want, and you guys can decide whether you think those are good or bad fixtures. Some people will say they're good. Some people will say they're pretty average. Um, that's up to you. But I think... Palmer is a nice player to have in your team, but don't sacrifice good players for him. That would be my advice there. Of course, he's just scored four goals, so um, <laughs> it's very difficult to make that argument. But that's just my opinion on that one. Let me know what you think about Palmer. Would you sell a Salah or a Saka for him? Are you going to go for the full knee jerk on that one? Or are you going to give him a couple of weeks, get these tricky banana skin fixtures out of the way first? Let me know about that one. In terms of monitor, Saka, I don't think he's an automatic buy at that price tag. If you have him, you keep him, but... Looking at the fixtures after Southampton, they're not so hot. You obviously keep him for that Southampton game, but do you buy him if you don't have him already? Not sure. Maybe. Uh, Martinelli is someone to monitor as well, as is Brennan Johnson. And the two minor concerns about these players is the minutes. Slight minutes risk here. Not a huge minutes risk, but slight. Uh, Trossard I would put in the same category as well. All players to monitor and think about through the week if you are looking to go for someone a little bit cheaper. They all have huge potential to score big 
points indeed. Particularly Johnson, who has been in red hot form recently, and Trossard actually, who's not on this list, but I do want to mention him. He's play, kind of playing in the, the forward position, but it's going to depend on Champions League minutes. It's going to depend on fitness of these players' colleagues. How fit is Marino? When is Erdegaard coming back? When is Son going to return to the Spurs team? And that's all going to impact whether we go for players like Martinelli and Johnson. That's why they're in the monitor. And McNeil, I'm going to put in the monitor as well. Yes, he did score two goals last week. One of them was a wonder goal. Do I trust him to do this every week? I do not, unfortunately. His creative numbers are pretty good though, but in general, I would maybe give him one more week of scouting. So that's why he's in the monitor. And we're going to avoid Luis Diaz. Yes, I would keep him if I had him. If I didn't have him, I don't think I'd buy him. Don't buy, don't sell. That's kind of the player Luis Diaz is for me right now. Um, we'll leave it for now because I'm just worried about minutes going forward and I don't love the Chelsea and Arsenal fixtures. I think we can maybe go in on Luis Diaz later in the season if, uh, if things look good. Uh, after that, Sancho, again, the fixtures... Uh, I do think the fixtures genuinely are quite rough over the next five for Chelsea, particularly when you consider Arsenal in 11 as well. And although a player like Cole Palmer or Jackson, these are kind of players I trust a bit more, Sancho, not so much. Four assists, yes, but one of them, he was it was kind of just a, a kind of sideways pass to Jackson who ran through the whole team and scored. The other one was a penalty assist, so he got fouled and, and uh, Palmer converted the penalty. I don't know how sustainable it is. You can see on screen, guys, 0.57 expected assists and he's got four assists. So the data does not back it up. The fixtures don't look great. He's not a 90-minute man. There might be some rotation here and there for him. Overall, I don't think I'd go there. And Smith Rowe against Man City, just not the time to buy. Defenders, Guardiola, like him a lot. I've been telling you guys, he's been so unlucky and he is getting more and more attacking. And what does he do in game week six? He scores a goal. Guys, I stopped, we, we saw this coming. We surely saw this coming. And of course, clean sheets we've got to see coming as well. The fixtures look much better for clean sheets in the next three for Manchester City. But uh, will they actually keep a clean sheet is another question. Pedro Porro, we mentioned him before. Honestly, he is a player I'd be looking at buying right now. Really like the look of him as a pick. I probably will buy him uh, myself, maybe for one of my Liverpool defenders over the next couple of game weeks. Gabriel is still going to be a buy because of his attacking threat in addition to the clean sheet potential that Arsenal always possess. For monitors, Mikalenko at 4.3 million. He is in here as a value pick. Someone to monitor now that Branthwaite is back. Um, it looks a bit shaky in the first half for Everton, but in the second half really looks a lot better and we could see a return of Everton of old. So a possible player to pick up there from the Everton defence at a very cheap price tag. Like the look of that. Liverpool defenders, not sure I'd be buying them at this point, even though Canate scored the first goal of his career. Uh, well, certainly his career at Liverpool. It's, it's not going to happen every week. 5.2 million isn't exactly cheap and Chelsea and Arsenal do look like fixtures where Liverpool can concede. I mean, maybe they even concede against Crystal Palace. Um, but certainly if I had Canate, I'd keep him for game week seven. I don't think I'd pick him up right now. Don't buy, don't sell. Uh, Lewis, another player to monitor with a little bit of ro uh, rotation risk there. Van der Ven, a player to monitor at 4.5 million. I don't mind that price tag for him. Um, but do we trust Spurs defensively? I'll leave that with you. And of course, we're going to avoid these defenders who have horrible fix just this week. Masraoui. Why are people still buying Masraoui, by the way? I have no idea. Seems to be one of the most popular transfers in every week. But uh, he he's not really a player to buy in Man United's current situation with the Aston Villa away fixture up next. Robinson and Gay against Man City and Liverpool. These are just the, t the toughest teams you will face if you are a defender. So uh, we're not expecting clean sheets in e any of those fixtures. And uh, yeah, wouldn't be super convinced by attacking returns in them either. And finally, quickly, let's do the goalkeepers because uh, you guys really want me to do goalkeepers in the Dubai Cell Keeper Void video. But I do just want to say uh, I don't really recommend goalkeeper transfers ever unless your goalkeeper is injured, suspended, or you're on a wild card. Just to use transfers on a goalkeeper is almost always a complete waste of time. But I am a slave to the people and this is what you guys requested. So we're going to do it. Uh, so if I was to keep a goalkeeper, it would probably be the likes of Allison and Pickford. If I was to sell a goalkeeper, it would be Henderson and Leno. But again, can't stress this enough. You have to be in such a 
privileged position to uh, justify making a goalkeeper transfer. It's probably not going to be worthwhile, even if you are selling Henderson and Leno ahead of Liverpool and Man City, because the week after that, they might keep a clean sheet or they might get a lot of save points and whoever you replace them with might have a good fixture, but they don't save anything and they concede a goal and... it's just this is just how goalkeepers work in FPL. I've played this a long enough time to know that. Uh, if I was to buy a goalkeeper, it would probably be Raya or Sells because of the great defensive record of Forest and that 4.5 million price tag to get a, a goalkeeper from a top defence is really quite nice despite that tough fixture against Chelsea next. But the fixtures after that do look quite good. Of course, we wouldn't be looking to buy a Man United goalkeeper right now. And Sanchez is an interesting one. I actually do think he will keep a clean sheet against Forest. So uh, if you have him, I probably would keep him for game week seven as well as any Chelsea defenders. But after that, Liverpool, Newcastle, Man United, Arsenal, I wouldn't be so keen to own a Chelsea goalkeeper for that. So if you don't have him already, I would probably just wait until game week 12 to buy a player like Sanchez. I I probably will think about picking up Sanchez myself in game week 12. But Not quite yet. Want to get these bad fixtures out of the way for him. But let me know if there's any other players you want to talk about in the comment section that we haven't mentioned today. And uh, we'll give them a rating, buy, sell, keep, or avoid. And of course, guys, if you disagree with any of my ratings or you want to give your own buys, sell, keeps, and avoids, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comment section as well. But thanks for watching. Make sure you drop a like before you disappear. Do subscribe if you're new around here. Check out the new podcast episode and I will see you later, mates. Bye-bye.